spoiler warning. This review and the game itself include spoilers from Danganronpa Trunka Happy Havoc. If you haven't played it yet, definitely check it out before considering this one. It's a cold hard fact that Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc and Danganronpa Goodbye Despair are two of the best games on the PS Vita. Well, that is alongside Persona 4 Golden. I'd even go as far to say that the Danganronpa franchise is one of the best new IPs out there from the past few years. It's seriously that good and if you haven't tried it yet, well, I would definitely suggest playing them before you even watch this review. So I'm sure that you can imagine, as a massive Danganronpa fan, I was pretty damn excited to hear about Ultra Despair Girls, a game to bridge the gap between game 1 and 2. But is this third person shooter a beautiful ray of shining hope? Or maybe it just felt maybe plunged into a pit of monokuma despair? Let's find out. Yes, you heard me right, stepping away from the full on murder mystery visual novel genre, Ultra Despair Girls is a survival horror style third person shooter. You play as Kamaru Nayagi, the sister of the first game's protagonist Makoto. Kamaru has been kidnapped by an unknown perpetrator and locked inside a small apartment for years, completely oblivious to the destruction of despair going on in the outside world. Managing to escape her prison, she's become equipped with a hacking gun, which shoots bullets at enemy monokumas running towards her. The gun holds different types of bullets, such as break bullets, which are your standard damage dealing type, bullets that make your enemies dance, bullets that knock over targets, and other types which you pick up along your journey. While the core action gameplay has some interesting mechanics, like these arcade cabinet sections, where you can see a little map overview of all the monokumas in the area, and you have to plot out the best way to go around and knock them all down in one shot, for the most part, to put it very bluntly, it's just not fun at all. The camera often feels way too close, like you'd be trying to shoot a monokuma down and then you'll turn around and there'll be like a wall right in your face and you turn back around again and the monokuma will be in your face but too close for you to shoot it or do anything and then you'll die and then the scenes just feel really repetitive and you're often forced to backtrack and you're like, why? <laughs> and then you can guarantee that around every single corner, every single corner, there'll be a monokuma waiting to jump out and attack you and scare you. And it works every time. Not to the credit of the game, but my own wimpiness. Like, literally, I was terrified to just... Every corner, I was kind of slowly inching round with my gun, like... <laughs> trying to see if there was one there. They always get you. Luckily, you can also play as another character, Toko, the ultimate writing prodigy character from the first game, that has a grossly over-the-top obsession with the ultimate affluent prodigy, Yakuya Togami. Toko has rather awesome and OP melee-based attacks, but unfortunately their use is limited to a meter, meaning you can only use them in absolute emergencies, like when you're surrounded by an army of angry looking monokumas. Although Toko's attacks are basically godlike because she can't take any damage, I do kinda wish that the whole combat segment would have been just Toko alone and not Kamaru's shooting scenes because they were awful. But because this would have mean it would have just been so much quicker and I could have cut straight back to the core story, story segment, the important bit. Going back to the story, once back in Toa City, Kamaru discovers that a group of five children called the Warriors of Hope have taken over, commanding armies of robot monokuma killing machines, and encouraging children to wear monokuma masks and slaughter every single adult they come across, in order to create their very own paradise for kids, completely free from adults. And it's creepy as hell. This is the first game in the series which has made me feel like truly terrified of Monokuma. He actually is scary in this game and not just kind of comedic value like he was in the other games. In fact, you wait until you come across Junk Monokuma. It's this crawling mangled thing where oh, I just I can't even describe it, but it crawls towards you and it's literally the most horrible thing I have ever seen and should be banned. <laughs> but then again, I do think this is probably the creepiest Danganronpa game yet, and that's saying something after you've played one or two, in a good way. The story is genuinely interesting, and each character as memorable and intriguing as any other in the series. There's even a few nods to and cameos of characters from Trigger Happy Havoc and Goodbye Despair, which series veterans will appreciate. While of course I found Toko interesting as a character in the original game, I wasn't totally convinced that she could pull off a starring role in this game. But to my delight, she really came into her own in Ultra Despair Girls, and her awkward and downright crazy personality perfectly complemented the rather normal, average high school style protagonist Kamaru. 
The cutscenes are awesome as always, splitting from an anime scene to 2D pop art and even some really well done pre-rendered CG, and stylistically, it feels just like any other Danganronpa game that we know and love. Well, aside from the 3D combat scenes, but we'll forget about those. In the EU version, unfortunately you can't opt in for Japanese VO and English subtitles, which is a bit frustrating at first when I was used to hearing Byakuya and Toko's Japanese voices, but credit where credit's due, the English VO is actually pretty good, and helps capture the great banter and even touching moments between Kamaru and Toko. Yet personally I felt that all the game's combat sequences did was just pad out the game, making the whole experience feel slow and stretched digressing you further from the plot and shifting the focus away from the rather interesting narrative that's driving the whole game. Which is a shame, as Ultra Spare Girls still has a great, witty and well-written script and some interesting twists and turns that we've come to expect from the series. The first chapter of the game in particular felt very slow to get going after a rather dramatic introduction, and often made you feel like you were backtracking just to flesh out the gameplay, but fear not because things do really start to heat up after the beginning of chapter 2. All in all, Ultra Spare Girls is a rather well-written and intriguing story that is just frustratingly marred by some really lousy third-person shooter gameplay, even though it does have some interesting puzzle mechanics. But despite its flaws, I couldn't help but push on to finish it to find out what happens to the characters that I've invested in and that I kind of care about. If you can push on past through the combat sequences to get to the real core part of the gameplay, the story, and see all the amazing, memorable characters and creepy ass settings that Spike Chun's Earth has created, I'd really recommend doing so. But if this game was a visual novel, it would have been great, but as it is, I can only really recommend it to the most hardcore Dangan fans among us. So that's it, thanks again for watching this review, I hope you found it handy. If you've enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the like button and maybe leave a comment and possibly even subscribe if you're feeling particularly generous. Thanks again and I'll see you later. Bye!